Good evening, everyone. First, I would like to welcome my professors. My name is Sarah Thamur Kadom, and I will be presenting my graduation research today, titled with Oral Hygiene Awareness Among Dental Students. My special thanks to my supervisor, Dr. Haider Rad, for his great and continuous support and encouragement all the way. The parts which I'm going to highlight within this presentation are first the introduction, the aim of study, materials and methods, the results, discussion and atlas, conclusion and suggestion. Globally, oral conditions affect 3.9 billion people around the world and the global burden of which increased 20% from 90s to 2010. And the dental caries affect 60 to 90 percent of school age children and most of the adults. And predental diseases are prevalent in 50 to 90 percent of adults, becoming severe in 10 to 15 percent of them. While for the gingival disease, occur uh, in the majority of children and adolescents. As we know, oral health touches every aspect of our life, but it's often taken for granted. And the uh, oral cavity is the window of our health and our body, uh, and it often uh, gives us clinical uh, signs of nutritional deficiencies or general infection. And there is a close relationship between the oral disease and other systemic disease like diabetes, for example. And in a recent study that was conducted by our professors, Dr. Haider and Dr. Ali, uh, which has established a year ago among the Iraqi population, uh, revealed that there is inappropriate levels of oral hygiene and periodontal disease awareness and knowledge among the Iraqi population. For that reason, further details needed to be collected. So the aim of this study is to evaluate the impact of dental education on oral health awareness between two groups. The first stage dental students, which represent the non-dentally educated ones, and the fifth stage dental students, which represent the dentally educated ones. For the materials and methods, an online cross-sectional survey was used of two weeks duration, the questionnaire was built using a Google platform and distributed on their private college-related groups through the class representatives of the first and fifth stage of Iraqi dental colleges. And the total reached were uh, 3,721. Uh, 2,116 of them was uh, belonged to first stage and 1,605 was from the fifth stage. Uh, regarding the questionnaire, the questionnaire consisting of a demographic data section, including the college in which they uh, study dentistry at, uh, the uh, gender, do they smoke or not, and there are two main other sections for to evaluate the oral hygiene and periodontal disease, and uh, the variables collected uh, uh, included the duration, the frequency of tooth brushing, do they brush their tongue or not, uh, the replacement of their brushes, uh, do they use extra oral hygiene, hygiene tools and the students' perception of importance of oral hygiene practices. SPSS was used for the data analysis. Each response was marked with one for the positive response according to the literature and uh, recent studies and zero for other answers. And for each respondent, answers were summed to give an overall score. The frequency of positive responses was used to determine the difference of awareness between the student stages using chi square test and man with me test was used to compare between the levels of awareness between the two groups. For the results, first regarding the frequency of tooth brushing, the majority of first stage students brush their teeth once a day while for there is a higher frequency or fifth stage students brush their teeth at least twice a day. And regarding the time spent on tooth brushing among the two uh, groups, the majority of both the first and fifth stage students brush their teeth around one minute. Regarding brushing their tongue practice, the majority of both of them sometimes brush their tongue. And for the use of adjunctive tools, uh, a considerable percentage of first stage students did not use any adjunctive tools compared to fifth stage students. And regarding the toothbrush disposal, the majority of both the first and fifth stage students change their brush around uh, six, every six months, but there are lower percentages of fifth stage students 
change their brush when damaged than first stage students. And regarding the knowledge about the effect of sugar free chewing gum, first stage, the majority of first stage students thought that sugar free chewing gum is harmful. While on the other hand, majority of fifth stage students thought it is beneficial. And regarding their knowledge about the effect of coffee tea smoking on teeth staining, the majority of both of the five and the first stage students believe that it does cause teeth staining. And for the frequency of scaling, high percentages of first stage students have never visited the dentist for scaling before compared to fifth stage students. And regarding the toothpaste size, whether it is fluoridated, non-fluoridated, and any kind, the majority of both first and fifth stage students use non-specific kind of toothpaste. And regarding the knowledge of the etiology of gingival bleeding, uh, poor oral hygiene was the most factor used by the majority of the two stages in the percentages of uh, 70% and 92.4% of the first and fifth stage, respectively. Regarding the knowledge of the etiology of tooth mobility, 37.6% uh, uh, of first stage students believed in periodontal disease as a cause uh, factor for tooth mobility compared to 80% of uh, fifth stage students. And at last, uh, regarding the knowledge of impact of periodontal health on general health, 55% uh, of first stage students believe in the positive impact of periodontal health on general health compared to the uh, almost uh, three quarters of the fifth stage students about their opinion that does effect on general health. So the p-value was 0.00, .00 and this is a clearly demonstrate the high level of awareness uh, in a comparison between the two stages. So that brings us to the need of oral health education. One of the most important things for dental students to have a good oral health awareness, as they will be the major providers of oral public health promotion in the future. The improved awareness of oral health among dental students is beneficial uh, to the maintenance of patients' oral health and it's instrumental in preventing oral diseases. As shown in the results, there is a quite pronounced variation in awareness between the first stage and the fifth stage dental students. These variations arising from the difference in knowledge of health and dental education and dental awareness regarding many aspects. For example, regarding the main cause behind teeth mobility, the first stage recorded very high percentages. It's almost three quarters of fifth stage in comparison with approximately 40% of the first stage that the uh, periodontal disease is the main reason behind teeth mobility. This might be due to the shortage in dental education for the first stage students. Obviously, the curriculum of the first stage students is quite different compared to the fifth one. And the first stage students have received uh, educationally, education basically focusing on the basic science. On the other hand, the fifth stage students have receiving education relevant to dental knowledge include both the etiological and the preventive aspect of the oral disease. For that reason, it is expected that the main source of dental health information and resources of the first stage students groups belong to what they had learned from their parents or from the TV ads or social media information, which become a well-known source of information that easily accessed by all the individuals. There was also a significant awareness between the two stages regarding the effect of periodontal disease on general health. 
The first stage recorded 55% uh, about agreeing on its important and its impact on general health in comparison with fifth stage who recorded 74.8% uh, on their agreement. And this, this uh, difference, as we said earlier, brought to getting familiar of association of periodontal disease with other medical conditions like heart and metabolic disease and other diseases. Another interesting findings that the variation in the history of the scaling between those two stages and uh, the fifth stage uh, was 40.2 uh, uh, comparing with the uh, first stage, 62% uh, never uh, did the scaling before. And the reason for the shortage in information of the need to remove calculus from time to time to maintain the health of oral uh, heart and soft tissue. The limitation of this research was the variation of the sample size. This is due to two main reasons. The first one is uh, the uh, arising of the continuous progression of new dental schools that doesn't have fifth stage yet. And the second reason behind is uh, regarding the uh, continuous increasing rate of first stage acceptance, acceptance number of students uh, compared to a couple of years earlier because a couple of years earlier was the acceptance rate or the acceptance number of first stage students was almost as maximum was 200 or 100 students. But nowadays the acceptance was a rise to 300 or maybe 400 students in the first stage. In the first stage. That's why there is a variation of the sample size. And for a conclusion, the first stage until students showed higher awareness than uh, first stage students. This potentially highlights the uh, impact of dental education in improving the oral health awareness. The more we know and the more our information is based on the scientific resources rather than media or ads, the impact will be greater and the more we will be aware uh, that oral hygiene uh, importance. And for example, the first stage students, they know that they have to take care of their oral hygiene and they do brush their teeth but they don't know the science behind it, so they are not fully convinced with it. So as a suggestion, it is recommended to include dental health and oral education topic as part of the curriculum of first stage students in all non-dental colleges to improve their oral health awareness. Such a suggestion is to overcome receiving the incorrect information from social media or other sources that are difficult to scientifically control its content. And this brings us to the end of the uh, presentation. Thank you for your kind attention and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.